How do I get close to God? Well, this is a very good question, and throughout the centuries, a lot of us, a lot of people have asked this question. And to look at this, how do I get close to God, you've got to look at what Jesus has said about this. And Jesus in John 14, 6, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Listen to this. No one can come to the Father except by me. What a statement. This statement also clearly indicates that he is the Son of God. But no one can come to the Father. So if you want to get close to God, it has to be through Jesus Christ. Who else could make such a statement? Or who else ever said such words declaring that through him could any person come to Almighty God? No other religious leader in all the history of the world has ever made such a profound, uncompromising statement such as this. Surely he is the Son of God. And he is proclaiming that the only way a person can have their sins forgiven and enter heaven is by accepting his substitutionary death and his punishment for sin on our behalf. He is saying, this is the only way a person can come close to God. And when you accept the words of Jesus, you become closer to him. And it is like simple faith. We need to accept that he is the only way. In him is the only truth. And only in him is there life. For surely, as he said, he is the only way, the truth, and the life. And no one can come to the Father except by him and through him. Jesus also said that heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. These are his words, and we're going to take a look at his words here as we go along in this short video to go, go into some detail about how we can get close to God. So is Jesus the Son of God? And did Jesus talk about this? Did he say that he was God's Son? All throughout the Old and New Testament, we see clear references to Jesus being the Son of God. The angel told Mary her child would be the Son. John the Baptist said the same thing. Nathaniel said it. Martha believed it. The sentry said so. Jesus claimed that he, that he said so. And the demons, even the demons, called Jesus the Son of God. I, am the fa I and the Father are one. And again, when he, he said, I am the one who is speaking to you when he was asked, Is the Messiah coming? Peter said that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered, You are blessed because this has been revealed to you by my Heavenly Father. So the Gospel of John was written to convince readers that Jesus is the Son of God. So this is a pure choice. If you, if you, you can make a choice, you can, the, the choice is, is a choice of our will. It's easy to believe. The evidence is very clear. Anybody who, uh, know, you know, we know that Jesus was a historical figure. And all we got to do is look at his life, look at the miracles. There is no question that he's the Son of God. The question is for us is, shall, do we choose to believe that? You can choose not to believe that. And Jesus said, if you, did, if you do that, if you believe not to believe in him, that God so, so loved the world that he sent Jesus to die for all of us, that there would be a price for that, that you would die in your sins. So it's a pure choice, and it's an easy choice. You, you, we know that Jesus definitely is the Son of God. All we got to do is take a real good look at his life and look at the scriptures here, and we can clearly come to that conclusion. And then we make a choice of our will to say, I choose to believe Jesus is the Son of God. How do we get close to God? Again, we're looking at the words of Jesus to get us a clear indication of who he is and what. how do we get close to God. And Jesus said, if, if, you, do not, if, you, if you do not believe in me, you will die in your sins in John 8, 24. Again, what a statement. If you do not believe in me, you will die in your sins. And again, no other religious leader ever talked about sins and the forgiveness of sins and dying for our sins. No other religious leader ever talked about this subject because they couldn't um only jesus christ can say if you if you don't believe in me you'll die in your sins and if you want to get closer to god all we have to do is believe in what he said so we bow in our bow our knees in humility to the words of the son of god and accept what he has said and you can have all your sins forgiven and why would anybody want to die in their sins when all you have to do is accept the sacrifice of jesus and have your sins forgiven the lie is that this is too simple that's the big lie from the enemy uh, that is too simple. It is simple. It's a simple choice that we believe that Jesus Christ died for us and we accept him. We believe in that. We accept him and we, we say that Jesus, you died for my sins and, and we repent of our sins and we get our sins forgiven. So don't let any human pride or religious pride stop you from simply accepting what Jesus has done for all of us, for each individual person. 
So how do you respond to these powerful words that come thundering down through the centuries? Well, first, don't be like Eve. Don't question the words of Jesus. Then believe who, who Jesus said he was, the only Son of God, and accept what he has done for you. Repent, thank him for forgiving your sins, and you will find a much closer walk with God. This is how you get will get closer to God, by accepting Jesus Christ, through accepting what Jesus has done for every human being. But we must, at, with our own free will, accept the gift of eternal life. And there will be resistance here. There will be, you know, there, there is resistance in our thoughts, that in our reason, that we don't want we, we don't want to do this. We don't want to accept Jesus Christ. There is resistance here. So you just got to get past that and with your will, choose to believe in Jesus. Jesus said, destroy this temple, I'll raise it up in three days. These words, bold and prophetic, declaring to the world, then and forever, that he would be raised from the dead. When you believe these words of Jesus with childlike faith, you please him, and trusting his words will always bring you closer to him, and therefore when you get closer to Jesus, you get closer to God. Again, no other religious leader ever spoke these words, and especially about being raised from the dead. He was clearly telling the world that his father would raise him from the dead, giving the world a clear sign that he is the only Son of God. And each individual person, regardless of denomination, who believes that Jesus is the Son of God, can have eternal life by accepting his words. He, if you believe in me, you will have eternal life. And there, and before we die, we can trust his words and enter into heaven because we've accepted and believed his words. Again, we, we, what we do is we, we believe the words of Jesus. We accept the words, not the words of man, the words of Jesus. That's why denominations, it doesn't matter what denomination a person is. We, Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is the Savior of the world. Jesus is the Lamb of God who took away our sins. So therefore we go to Jesus and accept his words and, and, and accept him and ask him to come into our hearts and lead, lead us in our life. If we ask him to come into our heart, then Jesus will lead us and guide us. So he said again, a very bold statement, whoever believes in me shall not perish, but will have eternal life. But will have eternal life. Again, this is a guarantee that if we accept Jesus, we believe in him. Believing in him means that we accept what he did on the cross for us, that we repent of our sins. We accept that he rose from the dead. We accept that he paid the price for our sins. So don't be fooled by the worlds of, of ma men. Man's words will come and they'll go, the words, but the words of Jesus will stand forever. And you can completely trust in the promises of the Son of God. We don't really want to trust man's traditions when it comes to your eternal life. We don't want to do that. We want to trust in the words of Jesus and the words of Jesus only. And the words of Jesus are clear and sharp and again come thundering down through the centuries. The truth of these words come thundering down. When you read them, it kind of shakes us a little bit. If, if you believe in me, you shall not perish, but it will have eternal life. And Jesus did talk about perishing, and he did talk about hell. So these are, the, the, these are real. So when you, when you meet Jesus, and we'll all meet Jesus, if you accept his words, your sins will have been forgiven. That is what believing in him really means. The Lamb of God has taken away our sins. He has said that you will have eternal life with him. And he, he also said that, you, that we will perish if we don't. Somebody will have to pay the price of your sins. Either Jesus will have paid the price or you will pay the price. That's for every single person. So we need to believe his words and his promises. And whoever believes in me, they will have eternal life. This is a, a promise. We can be assured that the words of Jesus are true. So therefore, if he said we will have eternal life, then you ha we will accept what he said. We will have eternal life. The Bible says, absent from the heart, present with the Lord. As soon as you die and you've accepted Jesus, you go straight to heaven. That's what he said. You will have eternal life. So the only way to get close to Almighty God is by, is by believing in his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you want to accept Jesus, you just say a very simple prayer. You say, Lord Jesus, I know that I've sinned against you. I know that I'm not perfect and I can't please you through my own efforts. Again, we can't please God through our own efforts. We please God and we get close to God by accepting Jesus and accepting his sacrifice, not through our own efforts. I know that I deserve to be judged according to my sins because we've all sinned. And I know that I have nothing to offer you. Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me my sins. Please cleanse me and make me right before you. I trust in what you have done on the cross. I realize that you died on the cross for me. I realize that you rose from the dead. And I put my trust in you. I do not rely on myself, but only on you. And I receive you as, as the Lord of my life and as my Savior of my soul. 
Lord Jesus, save me. I look to you alone. I cry out to you, Jesus, save me from my sins. And the Bible says, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So this is how we get closer to God. We only get There's only one way to get closer to God. Only one way. There are not many roads to heaven. There are not many roads to the to Almighty God. There is one. And His name is Jesus Christ. And it's very easy, as we've shown you here, to just accept Him and believe His words. And the guarantee is, you will have eternal life. If you want to go to Christian Health for Depression, you can click on there. And there's, a, there's a page that says, How to Become a Christian. It's a very simple process. And if you pray this prayer, you're already a Christian. Uh, so, if you want to email me, if you've prayed this prayer, I'll be glad to send you some follow-up information for free and give you some information as to how to live a Christian life. Thank you, Jesus.